makes our lovers just ain't there. We diffuse love I share. In today's video, we're going to be learning about the XY effects, how to set it up, how to use it, and how to get through a couple issues you may come across. And if you don't know what the XY effects is, it's pretty much just automation for different kind of filters, and I'm going to show you all the filters that they have. So right here, I got this beat, and I'm just going to go to the XY effects, and understand that XY effects, it correlates to the program that you're on. I have track one and I have my chop at the bottom and that's the program that I want to affect and I just go to XY effects. And as you can see, it says XY effects has not been loaded onto this program and it's going to be inserted just like a plugin. So if you go to the mixer, it's going to pop up right here and you can actually find the XY effects if you go to harmonics and scroll all the way down and you'll see it right there. Now, if you look at the top, it says output one and two. If you have it on output one and two, that is gonna be your master channel. And we'll get back to that because there is a couple issues that people are facing when it comes to the master channel and that they're trying to record automation and it doesn't work, but I do have a workaround to that. But the first thing is, it's a lot easier to do with the programs. So let's just insert it. Now keep in mind, if you do have a lot of plugins, you may want it to just be at the bottom like how I have it. I'll have it on insert four. So instead of just going here and then clicking through this screen, you wanna just insert it yourself and just insert it at number four. Now let's say you ran out of inserts. There's no worry to that. All you have to do is just go to the top where it says output one and two, click on it with your scroll wheel, and then just use one of the sub mixes. That's going to be the workaround. So you would just switch that to submix, and then you could just easily put it through the submix by going to submix one. You could also do it on the returns. Now that we have our XY effects set up in our program, if you look at the bottom right, you could go to setup, and setup is just going to show you all your filters. So if you click the scroll wheel on the left side, you can see all the different filters that you have. So it's really user friendly. You just play your beat, and then you just mess around with the effects. So let's just do that. And play close attention, like if you come over here, as you can see, these are eight notes and 16 notes. You just gotta look at the numbers right here. So 16 notes, 32 notes, eight notes, and then you come to a fourth, a half a bar, and then two bars. And then depending on where you at in each box has like a different frequency range. So let's say you find like a pattern that you like and you wanna record that in. Your automation is on right. So the green means it's on read. And read just means it just gives you the time to practice and audition your effects. And then you could just press write and that's gonna record it. So you don't even need to do anything but just press play start. Now let's say you didn't like what you have and you want to delete it. You can press undo, but the thing about undo, you're going to have to like press it a lot to make sure that it deleted the automation that you want. So take your time with it. Don't just press it like crazy because you might delete something that you didn't want to, or you could go to your grid mode. So we could just double click main. Then you just press this arrow up, click on velocity, click into velocity, and then you can see all the different automations right here. And you can just go through and just delete it. You can just use the eraser tool and just, you know, take that out. So now let's hear it. So there's no automation, but if you press undo, then you have it back. Now another cool thing is latch. So latch pretty much hold the effect for you so you don't have to just hold down. Let's say you're using a low pass filter. So let's go to a low pass filter manual. And manual, as you can see, it shows in green. Anything else that shows into blue, like let's go up for instance for the beat repeat low pass filter and it's in blue, that means it's synchronized to a beat. And if you want something more free, you would just go to a low pass manual filter. Make sure that you're not just doing things and you have right on. So you gotta really pay attention. Make sure you turn it back to red. And even when you're making a beat, a quick tip is to use shift and then click the automation and it turns it off completely. So let's say I do want like a one bar, two bar loop of it just being in the low pass filter and I just don't want to hold it. I could just keep on latch and then I could just play it. Now you can always just press restart and just add it in, but let's say you want to add something at the beginning, the best way to go about that is just to get that count up. So it's overdub and play start. 
then I can just let go, let it do its thing. I can even switch it up and hold it there. And there you have it. And let's say like you're performing and you want to set it up with your Q links. So the easiest way to set it up with your Q links is go to menu and then you can either hit menu and pad two or you could just go to the menu and go to Q link edit. And with the Q links, you want to go to the program and you would just go to the first one and go to the insert that your XY effects is on. So I have my XY effects on insert two on my drum program. So I want the first one to be enabled so it could turn on the automation. I also want to have it momentarily so it turns off and then I'm gonna go to insert two again and do the X access. And then I'm gonna go to the third knob and do the Y axis. And then you can just mess around with the momentary to see if it works with your workflow. Let's go back. You don't even have to be on the XY screen too. I'm gonna show you what momentary does and it just pretty much turns off the effect by itself. So let's say you have it like this. Once I let go, then the effect turns off by itself. So that might be useful for your workflow and it may not. And let's say you want to change it. Let's go to menu pad two. Let's take it off a momentary. So yeah, it just depends on your workflow. Using the Q links without the momentary might be a bit challenging. And also using the Q links might be a bit challenging because you're not gonna be able to see like what part of the grid you're on. So now that we know how to set it up and use it and even use our Q links, let's go over a couple issues you may face. Now keep in mind, if you don't have the latest update, which is 12.11.9, you may face problems on like it not recording in program or some kind of issues that you're having and other people is not having, you probably just gotta update your MPC. So make sure you do that. So one issue you may face is layering. Let's say you wanna use your low pass filter throughout the whole thing and then you wanna layer another thing. You're not gonna be able to do that, which I find kind of odd. Like they should give you an option where to make it a lot easier. But I found a workaround. So let's just record like a low pass filter on this part. I'm just gonna mess around with it. And I might just use the latch feature again. Make sure it's on right. Now let's say you wanted to use a different effect. You can't just like go to a different effect and put on beat repeat because this is what's going to happen. So pretty much it just switched to the beat repeat and it took it off of your low pass filter manual. And we don't want that. So the only way to keep that and also layer on top of that is to use Looper. Now, I'm not gonna dig too much into Looper. I can do a video on that. If you want me to, let me know in the comments. And if you have found this video to be useful right now, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. We're gonna switch from input to resample left and right. And then we're gonna hit record. Now, keep in mind of the bars that are in each sequence. There's a couple of limitations on an MPC and you're just gonna have to find your workarounds. So the highest amount of bars you could get with a Looper is 16. Now, for me, I usually just do eight bar sequence. I don't really get to 16. And if I do get to 16, you'll still be fine. But if you have like a 64 bar sequence or a 32 bar sequence, it depends on your workflow. You may have to switch up your workflow a bit if you want to start using the XY effects a lot more. It just depends. Now, even though the highest is 16, I still want to just go to the amount that is originally at, which is eight. Because if you go to 16, it's just going to play over and it's just gonna get messy that way. So then you just wanna press record and then you wanna just hit play start. Also, you wanna have it on play. You don't wanna have it on overdub because when you're recording it and it finished the eight bars, it's gonna start back over and it's gonna be even louder because it's gonna be another take on top of your original take. And then we could just export that. And if you wanted a new program set up, make sure you set up a program before you do this. I'm gonna go to a new program, which is program six and I could just put it on pad one 
keep it and then all I have to do is shift and sample edit. So then you could just assign it to that pad. We could either do non-destructive slices or we could do pad parameter. So you want to mute everything else. So I did that with track one, track two, track three. We could go to that program and insert an effect or we could do like flanger and we could do that manual. So you can just mess around with it. So that would be like the workaround enable for you to layer other effects on top of one another. And essentially that will be the same thing you would do for the outputs. So let's say your outputs is not working properly. So what you want to do is have on looper. You could clear the other one. You want to press record and you're going to do play start, but you also going to hit next sequence very fast. So do the double tap. And I know this is kind of crazy, but this is the only workaround that I found right now. So. Make sure we set up another program and just go to track six and go to program seven. You can just solo it so it mutes everything else. And then we could go back to looper, export it, program seven, call it sample edit as well and keep. And you can even just get creative with your effects too. like. So that's how I would go about it. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch working with the XY effects, but I promise you, if you're patient with your music, you're gonna get great results. So just remember, just create. And if you like this video, like and subscribe and share with your other producer friends. Also, if you found the tips helpful in this video, then I recommend you watch the next video. It's full of gems and it's my top 10 tips and you don't wanna miss number nine and number 10. It's a game changer.